Hello and welcome back to another full Snapist at PC Build Guide, where today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Lanco 207. If you see any parts you like, you'll find links to all the parts in the description. So let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our case's tempered glass side panel, we can simply pop it out from the back and lift up and away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice we've got this perforated area down at the bottom, and this is the source of intake for our bottom mounted fans. Taking a look at our case's top I.O., we've got two USB Type-A ports, a power button, a combined headphone and microphone jack, and a single USB Type-C port. Our case's top mesh panel can simply be popped off from the back. And if we take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice there's no additional dust filters and the only are going with just mesh at the top. Our mesh front panel is magnetically attached at the top. All we need to do is lift it out from the top, and then we're going to be able to lift it up and away. Again, there's no additional dust filters and the only are going with just mesh here. So you can see at the front of the case, Lee and Lee have installed two 140mm PWM ARGB fans. And we've got a removable dust filter over our power supply's intake on the bottom of the case, and it can simply be pulled out from the front for cleaning. In terms of other fan and radiator support, at the top of the case you can mount up to three 120 or 240mm fans, or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator, while at the rear of the case it's up to a 120mm fan. If we take a look down at the bottom of the case, you can see Lee and Lee have installed two 120mm PWM fans set to intake, so this should be bringing plenty of cool air into your GPU. And those fans are going to get their intake through this large perforated panel on the side. It's held on with two captive thumb screws at the back. And once they have been loosened, we're going to be able to pull this panel backwards to remove it. There's two important design features to make sure these two fans provide the most airflow to your graphics card. And the first is our power supply is actually going to be mounted at the front of the case, meaning that there's nothing obstructing the airflow underneath these fans. The second thing, if you follow this panel along, you'll notice that our motherboard is actually going to be recessed backwards keeping it well away from these fans. So the only thing above these fans should be our graphics card. As you'd expect with the motherboard tray being recessed, there's no support for back connector motherboards. You can see we don't have any additional cutouts. And in terms of motherboard support, the case is compatible with up to ATX size motherboards. If you want to go with a CPU air cooler, the maximum height supported is up to 180 millimeters. You can see at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PC expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 375 millimeters. So our graphics card should be well supported in this case with this GPU support bracket. And it can be installed in three different positions. You can see it's currently in the middle slot, but it can be installed here for smaller graphics cards and over here for larger graphics cards. So your graphics card is 315 millimeters or less, you're gonna install it in this slot. If it's 346 millimeters or longer, you're gonna install it in the furthest slot towards the front and anything in between, it's gonna be the middle slot. So for the graphics card I'm going to be using, we're going to install it in the slot furthest towards the back of the case. So all we're going to need to do is remove the thumb screw. We can then slide the support bracket along and replace the thumb screw. So I'm not going to put it in all the way yet because what we're going to do is slide it up to where it supports our graphics card and then we can fully tighten the thumb screw. Moving to our rear compartment, and you can see cable routing space looks to be excellent. And as you'd expect, coming from Lian Lee, the cable management is going to be great. So we've got plenty of clips with Velcro cable straps here. And we've got some plastic clips up here for managing our EPS cables. So as I mentioned, our power supply is going to go at the front of the case here. So it's going to be installed with the I.O. facing this way. So all our cables are going to come out here and up into this cable management area where they can be routed across to the case. So cable management should be quite good in this orientation. The only slight limitation because it is being installed in this orientation is the length. And although the case supports full-sized ATX power supplies, the maximum length supported is only up to 160 millimeters. And if we look in from the other side, you can see we've got the holes here for securing our power supply. And then we've got this cable extension, which we're gonna plug in to the back of our power supply. And then we've got the adapter in the back of the case where you're gonna plug your power supply cable into. Down at the bottom of the case, we've got two drive trays. They're each held on with a thumb screw, which we need to loosen. And then we're going to be able to tilt the drive tray up and lift it towards us to remove it. So on each of these drive trays, you're going to be able to mount either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. And you can see on our second drive tray, we've got our case accessory box. So you shouldn't need to worry about mounting drives at the bottom interfering with the airflow because the bottom of the case is solid and the airflow for these bottom intake fans is going to come from both sides of the case. So you're going to be able to use these dividers to organize the case accessory box, keeping all your screws and other components separate. We're now ready to start work on our motherboard where we're going to be installing our CPU, the brackets for our CPU killer, our M.2 SSDs and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open our socket cover, we're going to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way towards the middle of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket up. 
We can then lower our CPU down into the socket, making sure we've got the text the correct way up. And once we're happy, the CPU is sitting correctly in the socket, just wiggle it from side to side to make sure that it is. We can go ahead and close our socket cover down again. And then as we close this lever, the black bit of plastic should pop off and we'll put it into our motherboard box for safekeeping. This brings us on to installing our M.2 SSDs and we've got four M.2 SSD slots on the board and heat sinks over the top three. The top two slots are Gen 5 slots while the bottom two slots are Gen 4 slots. And we've got one Gen 5 drive and one Gen 4 drive to install. So we're gonna install our Gen 5 drive in the top slot. The reason for that is the second slot down shares PCIe lanes with our top uh, PCIe slot. And if we install our drive here, the PCIe lanes for our graphics card gets reduced from 16 to 8. Top slot, there's no limitations. It's exactly the same with our bottom two slots. If we install our Gen 4 drive in the top slot, there's no limitations. Whereas if we install in this bottom slot, there's two limitations. The first is that there's no heatsink. And the second is it shares lanes with this bottom PCIe slot and it will be disabled if you install a drive in this slot. So we're going to be installing our Gen 5 drive in the top Gen 5 slot, and our Gen 4 drive in the top Gen 4 slot. So we just need to remove our heat sinks. And then we can take our Gen 5 drive, pop it into the slot, and to secure it, all we need to do is push it down. It's going to clip into place. And then same thing with our Gen 4 drive. Before we return our heat sinks, we're going to need to remove the plastic protection, and then we can replace our heat sinks. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so we'll open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line our RAM up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and the RAM is going to clip into place. So we're going to need to remove the stock clips from the motherboard. They're each held on with two screws. And then we've got a stud bolt to go on to each corner. You'll notice this has two different sizes of threads and it is the bigger thread that you're going to want to screw into the motherboard. We do get this little spanner in the box and you shouldn't really need it for tightening it, but it can be quite difficult to actually remove these. And it's quite nice that you're just able to put this on and turn it. We get two different brackets for AM4 and AM5 sockets and it just depends on the orientation you want to be installing the pump on your motherboard. So if we set these shorter brackets on, first of all, you'll notice that the two screws for fixing your cooler are going to be at the top and bottom of the motherboard. Whereas if we put the larger brackets on, you'll notice that the two screws for securing the pump to the motherboard are going to be at either side. So you just have to line your AIO up in the case and decide which way the tubes are going to look best with the pump mounted on the motherboard. So you're going to have these side to side, you're going to use the longer brackets. And if you're going to have these at the top and at the bottom, it's the shorter AMD bracket. So I'm going to have it side to side, so I'm going to go in with the longer brackets, and then we'll just get a thumb screw to go onto each corner. Next, we can set the motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. And you'll notice once the motherboard goes through the middle standoff, it's going to help hold the motherboard in place. And then we can secure the motherboard into place using none of the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory box. So normally at this stage, I will install our case cables. My worry is if these are stretching over this compartment, we're not going to be able to get our power supply into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all these cables over out of the way, and we'll install our power supply next. I've gone ahead and plugged the cables into our power supply that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24-pin motherboard cable, two 8-pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU, and our 12-volt 2x6 cable to power our graphics card. So we're going to want to make sure our power supply's intake fan is facing down the way. So I've freed up all our case cables, moved them over to the side, and then we can install our power supply. Then we can secure our power supply into place using four of the large power supply screws from the case accessory box. Next, we're going to want to make sure the switch on our power supply is turned to on. We can plug in our power supply's cable extension, and there's a little notch down here just to tuck our cable into. And then we're going to be able to replace the bottom mesh panel. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header on the bottom left hand side of the motherboard so we can bring it through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next we've got three system fan headers so I'm going to bring our bottom fan through and get it plugged into one of the headers. Then we can bring the PWM cable from our front fans through and get it plugged into a header. We've got two RGB headers down at the bottom of the motherboard so we'll bring the RGB cable coming from our front fans through and get it plugged in. Then we've got our front panel connectors and they're going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard so we can bring it through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. 
And then we've got our USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. So we can bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then just above that, we've got our front panel type C header. So we'll bring our cable through and push it into place. Then we've got a 24 pin header, so we'll bring the power supply cable through, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then top left of the motherboard, we've got a two 8 pin EPS cable, so we'll bring our power supply cables through and get them plugged in. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to start working on the I.O., so we can go ahead and set our fans onto the radiator. And we're going to want to make sure our cables are coming out towards the rear of the case. We can then secure our fans into place using the long radiator screws. Next we just need to daisy chain the fans together and then we get this long extension cable we'll plug into the end. We can then set our I.O. into place and secure everything into place at the top using the short radiator screws. And we can then replace our top panel. And then just going to pass the PWM cable through to the back of the case. And at the top of the case we've got two fan headers together. Our CPU fan header is the lower one. So we'll bring the cable back through and get it plugged in. Then we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. It does come with the cooler. We need to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. And what I normally like to do is just wrap all the cables up towards the top. Then we just need to line the CPU cooler up with the brackets on the motherboard. And then we need to tighten up the thumb screws. Our AIO pump header is just up here. Not the easiest to get a great shot of it but we can bring the cable up and get it plugged in. So I'm just going to rig our ARGB cable up to the back and we've got an ARGB header here so I'm just going to bring it back in through the cutout and get it plugged in. In the box we do get these clips which can help organise your tubes but I actually think our tubes are sitting okay without any clips on them. So we can set up a 120mm fan into place at the back and we can secure it into place using the included fan screws. And then just going to pass the fan cable through to the back now, unfortunately, this fan cable is just a little bit too short to reach our motherboard. We do have a fan header just beside our top M.2 slot, but then we're going to have this adapter on display. So what I'm going to do is just add a cable extension into the fan, and then that's going to be able to reach our motherboard. And then we've got one spare fan header down at the bottom here, so we'll get it plugged in. We're now ready to install our graphics card, and we're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot cover from the top. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot, and once we're happy it's lined up correctly, it's just some firm pressure and it is going to clip into place. And then we'll secure it with the two thumb screws we've just removed. We can slide our GPU support bracket up to where it's supporting our graphics card. And then we just need to tighten the thumb screw at the back. A very important test with any GPU support bracket is to check it's not obstructing our fans. So the fans on our graphics card are spinning well and the bracket is well away from the fan. Then we can bring our GPU power cable through, line it up with our graphics card and push into place. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. Okay, so that's the build complete and looking great. If you don't know how to set your PC up, including installing Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, enter in the BIOS, update in the BIOS, and just all your BIOS settings. I've made another video that covers all of that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing, and then I'm going to be back with a case review. So you want to find out what I thought about this case, you're going to want to check that video out, and you'll find a link to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.